How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and you are watching Nature Now. So this is another video about millipedes. And as you might already know, there are a ton of different millipede species. I have a previous video on the iron worm, which is an incredible species. Maybe check out the link. In this video, we're going to focus on the Aphiloria group, also known as the cyanide producing millipedes. They are really intriguing. Let's have a closer look. Millipedes have been around for a long time. They were one of the first creatures to take to dry land. Actually, back then, oxygen levels were much higher, which allowed a lot of creatures, including the millipedes, to grow a lot bigger. Those millipedes were enormous, up to six feet long. I'm five foot eleven. They were even longer than me. I gotta say, if you're creeped out by millipedes, be glad you're alive now and not back then. So of course there are all sorts of millipedes out there, and many of them protect themselves in various ways. I'm sure you're already used to seeing millipedes coil themselves up into a spiral to protect the softer parts of their body. But did you know that some species, many in fact, actually produce foul odors or a noxious taste? Hence the cyanide producers. Aphiloria, the star of this video, takes that to the next level. They produce hydrogen cyanide. Aphiloria millipedes synthesize benzaldehyde cyanohydrin and store it in special glands. When the millipede feels threatened, it secretes the cyanohydride, breaking it down into hydrogen cyanide gas, which the millipede releases into its immediate environment. The cyanide these millipedes produce is a somewhat weak variety. However, if it gets in your mouth or eyes, it can burn really bad. It tastes disgusting. As you already know, these millipedes produce the gas as a defense mechanism. They might be able to curl up and stuff like that, but this, but this cyanide could be very potent to birds, uh, rodents, and of course other invertebrates. So potent, in fact, some of these millipedes are capable of killing many birds with just one dose. It is said that some of these millipedes can take six months to a year to actually build up enough of that hydrogen cyanide to be used a second time. So millipedes are detritivores, both feeding on and breaking down larger parts of uh, detritus on a forest floor, uh, both for themselves and making those smaller pieces available to smaller organisms to carry on with the same process. Really cool thing is, is where earthworms are absent, the millipedes fulfill the same role that the earthworms and other worms take on. And they will break down process as much as two tons of detritus and forest soils per millipede per year. Wow, that's a lot of soil. So I'm not exactly positive as to which species I have here. Perhaps they're Aphiloria virginiensis, but I actually think that they might be Aphiloria polychroma because I saw many color morphs within a small community over the last day or two. I suspect Aphiloria polychroma because, well, poly means many or multiple and chroma refers to their color. I'm not entirely sure how they produce the cyanide. I don't know if they actually produce it themselves or if they get it from the food that they consume. But it's pretty cool and it's unmistakable once you smell it. Things that contain cyanide like almonds or cherries have a distinct smell. We all know what cherry slushy and cherry cough drops smell like and of course other cherry sweets. So naturally these millipedes smell like cherry candy. Now get this, a millipede's heart is as long as its body. That's crazy, isn't it? Their legs have seven joints, but the male's legs are actually longer than the female's legs. Although you probably can't tell without comparing the two or getting used to it. So I noticed something that I find a little bit strange. While I set out to find these millipedes because I knew they'd be in the region, I was having trouble finding them. I'd look every few hours over the period of a couple of days. And then finally, late at night, when it was still raining a little bit and quite foggy, I started to find a whole bunch of them in spots that I looked over and over and over previously. The weird thing is, is they were all deceased. They looked really fresh, they looked alive, and they had just died 
right in the middle of what they were doing. One of them had died right while it was grooming itself from what it looks like. Um, you know, I went to touch them and they just fall apart. I think it might be some type of fungal infection, however, I don't know. Check it out. What the heck happened here? What is up with all these millipedes I'm finding? They weren't here this morning, and now I'm finding a bunch of them in the exact same spots I was looking at earlier, even logs I placed, and they're dead. They're all dead and semi-rotting. So this is number 12, 13. I don't know what's going on with these millipedes, but they're dead. This one marks number 15. I mean, these things were not in these spots last night, nor this morning. Some of these rocks, I trust me, I know what I'm talking about. So there you go. An amazing millipede, one of the cyanide producers. And I don't know what on earth happened to them, why they were dying. I don't know if it was just old age, you know, that time of year. I don't think it was the cold. In fact, I really suspect that it was possibly a fungal infection that had spread through the colony. There is a fungus that preys on millipedes. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a very striking millipede. I love them so much. They are really cool looking, and they're a lot of fun to keep, actually, as pets. Um, not that I'm telling you to go take them from the wild. It's not good. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. Once again, I am Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.